Hello, thank you for joining On Semiconductor's webcast. My name is Ali Hussein of the Corporate Marketing Strategy Team, and today I'll be talking to you about robotics in the emerging 48 volt ecosystem. Let's first talk about the history of 48 volts. It's actually the highest safe voltage that's used in systems, which is defined as below 60 volts. Above that, you have to have additional insulation or isolation as well as protection measures for the user. Also, 48 volts is high enough that we can minimize our conductors or our losses. And it's important to know that 48 volts is often a nominal voltage. Now, you might have heard of minus 48 volts for the telephone system. That actually was set to be negative 48 volts in order to minimize the corrosion of the conductors and connectors. And actually, what it does is it puts the corrosion onto the case. So today, there are several new applications for 48 volt power architecture. One is the automotive area where things like uh, belt starter and integrated starter generator are driving 48 volt systems. In the cloud, where increased power is moving to 48 volt power distribution, and factory automation and robotics, where we'll talk a little bit more detail. Thinking about the electrification of automobiles, start stop hybrids already dominate the market, and each of these has a 48 volt bus which uh, runs the starter generator. Gradually, more and more loads will move from the 12 volt to the 48 volt bus, and perhaps even the 12 volt bus will disappear. And in the future, autonomy and infotainment will bring additional loads. Turning over to servers and data centers, here's a block diagram of a server blade where we can see the E-fuse for protection, controllers and power stages for the multi-phase input for the main CPU as well as the memory, and then finally point of loads for the auxiliary uh, functions. Now you can see from the table that the peak power increases every generation and those peak powers are resulting in very high rack power density. With very high rack power density now the power supply is moving from the blade to being rack mounted and when it's mounted on the rack then that power needs to be distributed throughout the rack to each of the server blades. That's where 48 volt comes in where it gives 16 times lower transmission losses. In addition, when you move to 48 volts, the power tree can shift now where perhaps we will change our 48 volt to point of load topologies, perhaps with a different intermediate bus voltage or perhaps directly 48 to point of load. Several other applications that are pushing 48 volt uh, solutions are 5G networking power because of the large number of units and high power and massive MIMO a lot of server and software content are going to be going in there and require quite a lot of power. Power tools also, that are battery powered especially, are moving to 48 and 60 volt batteries. And especially for larger high power machines like chainsaws and mowers, efficient power conversion is very important. Finally, 48 volt has application in LED panels, especially for massive outdoor applications, where the 48 volts leads to lower power losses, thinner panels, and higher reliability. Finally, let's talk about industrial automation and robotics. Collaborative robots, delivery, drones, care assistants, and even toys and companions are all applications we can benefit from this 48 volt ecosystem. Here we see a high level block diagram of a robot with a central controller, various motor controllers, sensing, connectivity, and even display drivers. So let's make this more complicated by adding in the power. If we add power to the robot block diagram, it becomes considerably more complicated where we have functionality like AC to DC conversion for recharging the battery, battery management, DC to DC conversion, multi-phase converters, point of load converters, linear regulators, and motor drive. So all of these are areas where we need a solution for our robot to be powered and to uh, do its functions. If we look across these three applications, automotive, cloud, and industrial automation, there are many commonalities in terms of the voltages and power conversions that are needed. In fact, it's interesting to think of how we can cross-pollinate one solution to another in order to bring us more interesting and functional solutions. For example, if we look at eFuse, which is really a hot swap controller, with something like that, we could imagine modular robots. The eFuse is really an integrated power bus and system protection device where functions such as overvoltage, overcurrent, slew rate control, 
fault reporting and sh thermal shutdown give you capabilities to protect your system as well as to do things like hot swap. So what does hot swap look like? If we look at the graph on the left, we have an inrush without an e-fuse where you see a high load, a high spike in the load current. If we add an e-fuse in, you can see that the load current and load voltage ramp up very smoothly now, protecting the devices and the system both upstream and downstream of the connection point. In addition, you can use this uh, smooth startup to do your power sequencing as well. Now if we look at the robot power block diagram, we can see the locations where a hot swap controller could be placed, and each of these becomes a module which a robot could perhaps live swap in and out. For example, think of a robot that has a gripper arm, but then swaps it out for a drill, for, so it can drill a hole, then swaps back to the gripper arm. Or it adds image sensors or other sensing for the particular application that it needs to do. So with all these capabilities, now you could have something really interesting like a modular robot that picks up the pieces that it needs for the task at hand. So before we talk about specific products, let me tell you a little bit about On Semiconductor today. We are a $6 billion company with over 30,000 employees globally and a broad range of products that fall into markets such as automotive, industrial, to consumer and computing. Our products range from connectivity, power, imaging, sensing, all the way to analog and standard logic. In addition, we are a highly integrated company where we do much of our own manufacturing and we ship nearly 80 billion units a year. Our product range is very broad from this ESD diode, which is used in cell phones and is, has a larger dimension the size of two human hairs, all the way up to a power integrated module, which is used for solar inverters, it has a capability of around 80 kilowatts and is about the size of a deck of cards. So let's talk about a few of on semiconductor solutions for 48 volt applications. For 48 volt systems, our mid voltage MOSFETs underpin much of our technology, both from a discrete and integrated point of view. Our Best-in-class MOSFETs offer lower conduction losses for high efficiency, reduced EMI, high power density, and a wide variety of packages that gives you options in terms of your form factor and cooling solution. In addition, we have several different technologies which allow you to trade off depending on whether your interest is hard switching or soft switching, motor drive or DC to DC conversion, etc. One example of integration is the FDMF 8811, a 100-volt power stage. This is one of the highest density solutions on the market for a 48-volt system, where it has a high-side MOSFET and low-side MOSFET and a gate driver. FAN 65 series is an integrated solution for point of load for up to 65-volt input uh, and output down to below 5 volts. We also are enabling the connectivity of the robots Besides having the, all the core technology, including Sigfox, Bluetooth Low Energy, Zigbee, and others, we provide the key building blocks, including development kits and software stacks to make it easy to set up your connected systems. One of our leading connectivity solutions is the RSL10, the industry's lowest power Bluetooth Low Energy technology. Finally, we have a very wide portfolio of image sensors for all kinds of applications from autonomous vehicles to award-winning movies. This is just an example of our machine vision portfolio designed especially for industrial and edge AI applications. To summarize, there are multiple markets that are demanding 48 volt solutions. If we look across these markets, we can cross-pollinate them with solutions from each other in order to create new, innovative, and efficient solutions for these products. Thank you for your time and attention. For more information, please go to onsemi.com.